Let me turn to Representative Jamal Bowman. And this is the guy, the Democrat, who pulled the fire alarm. Why did he pull the fire alarm? Because he wanted to um, get time. Uh, the Democrats didn't want to have a vote. This was uh, this is all, of course, about the shutdown. It's all about Ukraine funding. But I'm focusing on Jamal Bowman's sort of heavy-handed tactics here. He goes, listen, if I pull the alarm, it'll create a shutdown of the whole building. What was he doing? Well, guess what? He's doing obstruction of an official proceeding, a familiar term, or it should be, because this is exactly what January 6th people are, protesters are in prison for. And of course, uh, Trump is all over it. He goes, basically, when will his trial begin? He goes, uh, when will uh, Congress, will Congressman Jamal Bowman be prosecuted and in prison for very dangerously pulling and setting off the main fire alarm system in order to stop a congressional vote that was going on in D.C.? Now, suddenly the left has realized, oh, 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 this is a bit of a problem because we've been ruthlessly locking up these January 6 guys, um, in some cases for long periods of time for this exact offense. So now they have to come to the defense of Bowman. And Bowman has come up with a defense that makes no sense. He basically says, in effect, that he pulled the fire alarm by mistake. Now, <laughs> how can you do this? First of all, it is worth noting that Jamal Bowman is a former school superintendent. He has been to innumerable fire drills. He He's acting like he misread the sign. And I'm actually looking at the sign. Let me look at the sign. Emergency exit only. Push until alarm sounds, door will unlock in 30 seconds. Now, there's nothing unclear about that. In other words, only use this if there's an emergency. If you, if you, if you, uh, if you push the, uh, the alarm, the alarm will sound and the door will open. Why? Because in an emergency that you have to be able to get out of every door. Now, interestingly, this guy pushes the fire alarm and does he go racing out of the door? No, he doesn't. He actually leaves later by a different exit. He, his goal was quite obviously to shut down the proceeding. And here's the point. Now, here's Kevin McCarthy, you know, on television. And he was like, I'm very disappointed. This was just a disappointing tactic. Now, we don't need this kind of rhetoric. Here's what we need. We need the Republicans in a unified way to press for criminal charges to be brought against Representative Bowman. I'm looking at the statute here, by the way, 18 U.S. Code 1512, obstruction of an official proceeding. It talks about obstructing, influencing, or impeding any official proceeding or attempts to do so uh, shall be fined, fined, fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. This guy could be facing a 20-year sentence. Now, will he? I would predict no, but of course, what the left is going to do is come up with gymnastics about why, oh no, he made a he made an honest error. Well, for the January 6th pro uh, protesters, there are no such available defenses. You obstructed the proceeding. In fact, in some cases, people are, are, are getting locked up, uh, are getting penalties, even though they went into the building after the official proceeding had already been stopped. Someone like Matt Perner uh, got into the building. He was there for like 15 or 20 minutes, but he didn't obstruct anything. The, the Congress had already adjourned at the time that he went in, but still he was charged with um, with obstructing an official proceeding. So I think this is a case where Republicans need to apply to the Democrats their own medicine. Don't just say, oh, this was just a uh, this was just a sneaky tactic on his part. Follow through and demand that if no one is above the law, if the law is going to be applied evenly to everyone, it should be also to Representative Jamal Bowman. Debbie and I made a New Year's resolution to lose weight, and well, thankfully, PhD weight loss came to our rescue. Debbie's lost 24 pounds, I've lost 27, and you can see we're keeping it off. We're both on maintenance. The program is based on science and nutrition, no injections, no pills, no long hours in the gym, no severe calorie restriction, just good, sound, scientifically proven nutrition. It's really simple. They make it easy by providing 80% of your food at no additional cost, and they tell you when and what to eat. You can also do this without ever being hungry. The founder, Dr. Ashley Lucas, has her PhD in chronic disease and sports nutrition. She's also a registered dietitian. She helps people lose weight and most important, maintain that weight loss for life. So if you're ready to take the step of losing weight like Debbie and I have, call PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Here's the number, 864 
844-1900. You can also find them online at myphdweightloss.com. The number again to call 864-644-1900.